Hello and welcome to the OWC instructional series of videos. In this installment, we're going to show you how to add an OWC solid state drive to your 21 and a half inch 2011 iMac using our DIY upgrade kit. This is an advanced process and we recommend watching the video in its entirety before attempting this upgrade. We've shut down and unplugged our iMac, gathered our materials, and are working on a soft static free work surface. Your iMac's original box will make a handy place to hold both the screen and the front glass while performing this upgrade. Simply reverse the styrofoam insert so that the curved opening faces upwards on both sides. We are now ready to begin. Attach each of the two heavy-duty suction cups to the upper corners of the glass front of the iMac. Then, gently but firmly pull forward on the handles to separate the glass from the magnets that hold it in. Set the front glass into the box we prepared earlier so that it's sitting on the flat part of the styrofoam and leaning against the box edge. At this point, you'll need to be extremely careful not to touch the screen itself as the oil from your fingers is very difficult to remove. Next, we need to detach the display. To do this, we'll need to remove eight Torx T10 screws, four on the right, and four on the left. Then, being careful not to touch the screen itself, use one of your nylon pry tools to pull the screen slightly forward. In the upper left corner, you'll need to disconnect the vertical sync cable. Grip the plug over the connector but underneath the tabs on the plug and gently rock it until it comes free. The display port cable is located towards the middle right of the iMac. To disconnect it, open the handle by lifting up on the black plastic tab, then lift the connection straight up and out. We can now disconnect the backlight power cable on the lower left side by pushing down on the connector to release the retaining tab and pulling the cable and connector downward. Finally, lift the display power cable up and out much like you did for the vertical sync cable. Keeping your hands on the outside edge of the display, you can now lift it up and out of the iMac and place it in a dust, static, and oil-free place. We recommend using the bag that covered your iMac when you first purchased it. The screen in its bag can now fit in the indented section of the styrofoam inserts in the box we prepared earlier. Next, we need to remove the optical drive. To do this, we'll need to remove these four screws. We'll also need to disconnect the optical drive's temperature sensor cable. First, gently peel back the tape holding the cable in place, then gently pull the connector out by the tabs at the top. Remove the optical drive from the bay by tilting the inside edge towards you slightly, then sliding the drive off its retaining pins. Then, gently pull the sensor cable we just detached through the channel until it's free. Finally, detach the SATA cable by gently pulling the connector straight out of the drive, which you can then set aside. Next, use your Torx T10 screwdriver to loosen the screw holding the optical drive fan in place. Then, unplug the fan the same way you did the other connectors. You can now pull the fan assembly free. Now, peel back the tape covering the battery and IR wires. By pulling back slightly on the case, you should be able to lift the IR sensor itself up and out of its slot. Then, use the tape to hold the sensor out of the way like this. Next, we need to remove the memory. Use your Phillips screwdriver to loosen these three screws which hold the memory cover in place. To remove the memory, first unfold the black plastic tabs in the memory bays, then pull the tabs straight downwards to eject the modules. To detach the airport card, simply undo the Torx T6 screw in the upper right corner, then gently pull it out of its slot. You can rest it on the hard drive to keep it out of the way. We can now detach the logic board. The first screw to remove is here, next to the graphics card heatsink. Next, these three screws near the lower right need to be removed. The lower two are shorter than the other logic board screws, but are slightly longer than the heatsink screws. The upper screw is a middle-sized screw.
then, you can take out this one near the bottom of the board. It's also a middle-sized screw. The next screw is located in the heat sink frame and is longer than all the others. The final screw is on the far left side, holding that heat sink in place. It should be roughly the same size as the other heat sink screw. The logic board is now loosened and we can prepare the SSD. Take your SSD and position it right side up with the SATA connector facing away from you. Attach the double-sided adhesive tabs one to each corner and peel the covering for the second side off. Then, do the same with a second set of pads on the right side on top of the previous set. This helps account for the curved surface of the back of the iMac. The SSD is now ready to install. With your left hand behind the heatsink and your right hand behind the logic board, gently angle the logic board assembly forward until the heatsink on the left clears the board just above it. Next, detach these three cables on the right side of the logic board, these three near the top, and these two near the lower left. Finally, detach this thick cable in the front and gently pull it out of the lower channel until it's out of the way. You can now lift the logic board up and forward, enabling you to get at the SATA port. The SATA port we're going to connect to is located here, on the back side of the logic board. First, arrange the power cable that came with your kit so that the little bump faces down towards the bottom of the board. Then, slide it into its receptacle until it snaps into place. Then, line up your kit's SATA cable and attach it to the connector just beneath the power connection. You can now set the logic board back into the IMAX case. Take care not to trap any loose cables underneath. Route the SATA cable around the heatsink so that it comes up around the outer edge, then behind this pin, and up towards the optical bay. You can now set the logic board back into place. When doing so, you'll need to make sure that the heatsink fits around these two tabs on the frame in order for it to sit flat. If you lift up slightly on the logic board, it should slide into place correctly. We can now plug in some of the cables we unplugged earlier. Start with these two near the lower left, then these three along the top edge. Next, attach the large black cable to its connector on the center of the logic board. Then make sure the cable is routed neatly through the lower frame and lays flat. Next, reattach the three cables you removed on the right side. Each one is differently sized, so you shouldn't need to worry about which cables go where. Finally, if your SD card reader cable came loose when you removed the logic board like it did in our installation, you reattach it here. In the fan area, you'll need to make sure all the wires are routed behind this post. Run the power and data cables you installed earlier behind the video card, through this channel, up along the outside of the optical bay, and through this notch here. You can now install the logic board screws to help keep things in place, but don't tighten them all the way so we can adjust the board later. Start with the two screws underneath the fan bay. They're the shortest logic board screws, but are still longer than the heatsink screws. One of the middle sized screws goes here, next to the fan bay. After that are these two screws on the left. The remaining middle sized screw goes in the lower hole, while the longer one goes through the heatsink frame. Turn your iMac around and plug in as many cables into the rear ports as you can. This will aid in realigning the logic board. You don't have to install all of them, but the more you have, the better. Adjust the logic board up and down slightly until the rear ports are properly aligned. You can tell the board is set properly when you can plug and unplug all the cables easily. 
Once the ports are set, you can remove the cables you don't need and completely tighten all the logic board screws you just installed. At this point, you can also replace and tighten the two heatsink screws. Next, reinsert the airport card into its slot, making sure the notch is to the left-hand side. Then, secure it into place with a Torx T6 screw. Attach the power and SATA cables you routed earlier to the SSD, then adhere the drive to the back of the iMac between the lower two screw pegs. Reattach the fan cable, then slide the assembly into place, making sure not to trap any loose cables underneath. Then, tighten the Torx T10 screw to hold it in. Now we can reinstall the optical drive. There are two pins next to the optical drive slot on the case. These line up with the two holes on the optical drive itself. Making sure no cables are trapped underneath, slide the two holes on the drive over the two pins, attach the SATA connector, then gently push on the drive so that the SATA connector clears the frame and the drive sits flat in the bay. You can then replace the four retaining screws, keeping in mind that the screw with the fattest head goes in the lower left. Route the optical drive temperature sensor cable back behind the frame and airport card, then plug it into its connector on the logic board. Peel off the tape holding the IR sensor in place, then slide the sensor along its channel to seat. You can then tape the cable back down. Now let's replace the memory. Position the memory module so that the notch is facing towards the left, then slide it into the slot it was before. Gently but firmly push on the module until it snaps into place. Do the same thing with any other modules. Once all the modules are installed, fold the black tabs over and tuck them underneath the memory modules like before. You can now replace the bottom cover. Get each of the three Phillips screws started, Then adjust the door as you tighten so that it closes flush. Remove the display from the bag and once again being careful not to touch the screen itself, set it into the iMac. Reattach the display power cable by simply sliding it into place. Next, reattach the display port connector. First make sure the handle is flipped upwards. You can then slide it into the connector, then flip the handle down to lock it into place. Finally, reattach the backlight power cable on the lower left by simply sliding it back into place until it clicks. Then plug the vertical sync cable back in. We can now secure the display in place. Take the smallest flathead screwdriver and slide it through the top screw hole in the display into the corresponding one on the iMac. You can then use the screwdriver to lift the screen up and down. Do this to align the second screw hole and insert a screw so that the screen doesn't fall. Repeat the process on the other side. You can now replace the remaining screws and tighten them all down. There are four notches on the bottom of the IMAX front casing which line up with the four notches on the front glass. Set the glass into place as shown, but don't close it yet. Use the microfiber cloth from your kit to make sure there's no dust trapped between the screen and the glass. You can then close the glass which will be held in place by the magnets. Check along the top edge to make sure there are no gaps. If there is one, it'll usually be in the middle near the eyesight camera. Simply place your thumbs on the front glass on either side of the camera and give it a small squeeze. The glass should now sit flush. 
You can now remove the suction cups from the glass and use your microfiber cloth to wipe off any marks. You may now hook your iMac back up, plug it in, and turn it on.